Hello and welcome. Do you have the flu or do you think you have the flu? And if the symptoms that you think are the flu, are they also symptoms of COVID-19? Well, we don't know. But it does appear that symptoms of flu are actually more likely to be COVID-19 than just flu. But let's find out more by talking to someone who is an expert and understands infectious diseases. I'm uh, pleased to be joined by Dr. Anita Matthew, Senior Consultant, Physician and Infectious Diseases Specialist at the Fortis Hospital in Central Mumbai. Uh, Dr. Matthew, thank you very much for joining me. First question, uh, what are the kind of symptoms that you're seeing today and are they consistent uh, uh, in the way they've been presenting themselves in the last six or seven months? Uh, we still have people coming in with uh, cold cough, fever or uh, just high grade fever, headaches, body ache. These were all the symptoms which were there earlier in COVID and they have been persisting uh, by and large. It's been the same kind of a pattern. We do have these one off cases who could have a uh, presentation in the form of some kind of skin related infections or skin rashes. Uh, people who have come with strokes and heart disease and uh, pancreatitis, but these are by and large, uh, let's say maybe less than 10% of the uh, presentation, 10 to 20% of the presentation, but majority of the patients have high grade fever as a major complaint. So I would say that right. the, the spectrum is essentially similar to what it was a couple of months back. Right. And I'll come back to the fever in a second. But, you know, when you talk about uh, heart conditions or pancreatic disease, is that because uh, uh, COVID has accompanied, accompanied this symptom? I mean, as in, is uh, it coincidental or is it that uh, COVID has triggered uh, this, uh, this condition? COVID has a tendency or a predisposition to formation of clots. Mm -hmm. So you can have a higher risk of patients coming in with clotting disorders. So that would be essentially to ones which we would see with the brain or the heart and other peripheral right. areas as well. Similarly, any virus can trigger pancreatic problems or diseases. So uh, pancreatitis, which were earlier caused by some other viruses, probably is also being triggered by COVID. You know, a, a lot of people, for instance, uh, you know, as you spend time at home, uh, maybe there's fatigue, maybe there is uh, other kinds of uh, pressure. So uh, people feel different things. Now, uh, sometimes that fatigue uh, may also, you know, make you feel that you've got COVID or, or, or essentially how should people be interpreting symptoms which may or may not be COVID, but could cause them obviously the same feeling of concern, uh, Dr. Matthew. Uh, so this is actually uh, not a very easy question to answer for the simple reason that a uh, lot of us would probably start, uh, you know, attributing each symptom that we have on a daily basis to COVID. So, but if you have fatigue, which is more than your usual, when I say more than a usual, it, it generally the patients of COVID will come to you saying that they are ex extraordinarily fatigued. They have severe amount of body ache and headache or, you know, uh, what we call as myalgia in our, our terms in medical parlance. Mm -hmm. uh, if they would have associated with that some amount of fever or a little bit of sore throat. And if there is a positive history in some form, of them having come in contact with someone who was COVID positive or where you do have a suspicion that you would have probably got exposed, then you should have a higher index of, uh, you know, suspicion, a lower threshold to go to the hospital or to get yourself tested. You don't need to even go to the hospital. Nowadays, you have uh, been given the provision by the government to go and self-test yourself. So these patients should do go ahead and do the testing. Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, but as I said, you need to probably look at a, a couple of symptoms rather than looking at only one symptom as the, you know, the heralding sign of, or thinking that this is where COVID starts. Let me put the question a little differently. Can I have a common flu and not have COVID? Or is every common flu necessarily COVID? Uh, to be honest with you, in the last seven months, I've not seen a single patient of swine flu. Mm -hmm. So it, it typically means that most of your flus now are uh, probably not there in the market, if you could uh, put it as that. So <laughs> yeah. most of the uh, most of the infections that we are seeing off late are COVID. So during a pandemic, the rule of thumb is you try to rule out the most common cause, which is, would be COVID, before you look at or embark at the other possibilities. So that's how we would look at in a pandemic situation. Now that would be for every case of fever that we are talking in terms of not just, you know, flu or flu-like right. and, 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 and can you explain why is that? I mean, you know, I'm sure people want to understand. I mean, why can't I just get a common uh, cold uh, or a cough? See, uh, and, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, your common cold cough that we are talking in terms of the flu-like symptoms, they generally typically start with a lot of sneezing, runny nose, sore throat and so on. You generally do not see the flu symptoms, that is your sneezing, your rhinorrhea, your running nose, all these are not very common in COVID. What is more common in COVID is some amount of sore throat, a good amount of cough and high-grade fever. These could be common features for both the condition. But having a lot of sneezing bouts or, you know, using up a lot of tissues trying to blow your nose is not a usual common symptom. You do not see that much with COVID. Right. But are people getting flu? I mean, could people also not, get... No. A no so that's what I'm saying. I haven't seen anyone having a, a flu-like normal. symptom. Yes. Yeah. The common cold and, that we talk in terms of. They have gone down. Yeah. Pretty much. As an infectious diseases uh, specialist, why is it that, you know, uh, you could have a uh, pandemic and the pandemic somehow completely superimposes or overrules all other forms of regular, let's say, infections and diseases that we all contract all through the, all through the year? Yeah, so a lot of it, uh, we need to understand that most of your diseases that we suffer from are basically because of uh, the fact that our organisms are there and our habits are different during the normal non-pandemic times. So mm -hmm. if you look at during the pandemic, there was a lockdown. So hardly uh, uh, folks would eat from outside. During the pandemic, again, you have a higher, uh, let's say, uh, threshold for cleaning your hands and your feet and, you know, having a bath on a regular basis, you interact less. So these kind of communicable diseases go down tremendously. So you don't see much of typhoid. You don't see much of common cold. People have been uh, masking themselves, they have been using at least tissues, handkerchiefs and they have been seeing to it that they are not kept in areas where others could get infected, even within the same household. So this automatically reduces your risk of getting a, a communicable or a transmittable kind of an infection. Secondly, the earlier dengue malaria that we were talking in terms of, they were more or less related to the construction activity, which also went down in the last couple of months. So, a lot right, of your I'm, yeah, go ahead. So, a lot of your infections are actually, if you go to see, in that sense, man-made. That's interesting. So, uh, and and uh, you know, when I I think I last spoke to you, we were uh, just seeing the onset of the monsoons, and now monsoons are more or less over. Uh, I mean, did did you see that kind of uh, uh, case flow in you know things in uh, dengue or malaria as you were anticipating? No, so we weren't anticipating a big number this particular year, but this is the, mm. the least that I have seen in the last 20 years. Mm. This is the, the, the amount of malaria or, or dengue or typhoid that I've seen this year is probably um, Below, very, yeah. very less. Yeah, very, very less. I mean, we have right. never and, seen this and, kind of low numbers. Right, and these cases that you've seen uh, that you saw in the last few months were uh, were so, uh, sole kind of or only uh, typhoid, malaria, and dengue cases. They were not typhoid plus uh, COVID or malaria plus COVID. No, they uh, we had two or three malaria with COVID, probably mm -hmm. one dengue with COVID, but there has been no typhoid cases that I have seen uh, in this last six months. And, and this you're saying is because uh, of all the precautions that people are taking or or, or not it, eating out or? Not eating out and whoever has been eating from outside as well. I mean, I'm sure in most of the places, uh, even your restaurants have been very stringent about washing their hands and stuff like that. And that's been helping. So you don't see right. much of gastroenteritis either. Right. And, and uh, you know, the weather is changing and has changed. I mean, we went from summer to uh, uh, monsoons uh, and uh, long, prolonged, heavy monsoons into, let's say, the uh, uh, early winter, which is really uh, October heat, uh, at least in cities like Mumbai. So is, is, does all of this uh, likely to or is it showing any impact on the way this disease is behaving so far? So we actually did see a surge in the uh, months of uh, June, July, August in the cases of um, um, uh, uh, COVID-19. But right. I'm not sure whether it was related to the monsoons per se. I thought it was more or less related to the fact that we have, you know, started having something like a community spread. 
which eventually mm-hmm. would have happened uh, similarly during the cold uh, months of the year the cooler months of the year we generally do expect more of respiratory infections people who are asthmatics or who have some kind of uh, issues with their lung they generally typically have a worse you know course during these 3 months now uh, if one anticipates that you are going to get more of covid in this particular months that won't be too wrong because it's something which is like a flu like illness per se at the end of it but as of now i don't think there are any suggestions to say that this are the numbers are going to go up maybe the numbers of swine flu might go up because now we have started opening up right and and is swine, swine flu can you define i mean how it uh, it uh, presents itself and uh, how does it progress uh, so the uh, when i when i'm talking in terms about any flu flu as i said is when we say we feel feel fluy it's as i said sneezing rhinorrhea which is runny right. nose headache body ache and so on right in covid one of the major symptoms which will be similar to this will be the fever and body ache and headache but other than that the sneezing and the runny nose is something which is typically not so common in covid right so that's one of and, the ways uh, to differentiate right and uh, you know in your hospital i mean uh, you have a lot obviously all the covid beds are mostly full and that's the case i think in many hospitals across the city now uh, are, are you seeing any change in terms of the time people are spending are they getting cured faster or even if it's a delayed cure uh, i mean are they coming out with less impact and uh, compared to earlier any any observations there Uh, so if you look at the spectrum we are actually we in the initial bit we were seeing patients coming out pretty well on the 11th day we could actually discharge those patients but over a period of time we have seen that typically the patients are staying back with us for almost 14 15 16 days from the first day of onset of symptoms because they somehow do not get better during the time frame that we would expect them to and we also have a delayed response in the form of what we call as or uh, what we are worried about and we call it a cytokine storm so we have had patients who have gone into the storm at a little later date than what we would really expect which is between the 8th to the 12th day so we have had patients go coming up to the 15th day 16th day they have had storm or they have gone home and come back to us with worsening symptoms which was something that we were not seeing in the earlier part of the illness so whether there's a change in the strain or whether there has been some mutation versus whether right. the reasons were the comorbidity in the patients is something that we will need to analyze and you know sit down and figure out in the data right uh, last question uh, dr matthew so uh, you know we are unlocking further uh, restaurants have uh, now opened up in cities like mumbai other parts of the country restaurants have been open for some time uh, movie halls are also opening up your advice to people who are watching or will watch this i would sincerely request everyone to look at what we call as wmd wash your hands as frequently as you can whenever there is a need right when you go and move out of the house go home change the clothes have a bath m stands for your mask don't let that mask down we have been seeing people walking on the streets going for morning walks all without a mask with the hope that you know the air is going to be fresh there is been fresh set of uh, uh, i think uh, guidelines from cdc saying that it is probably airborne as well mm. so we are going to risk ourselves if we don't mask ourselves we are going to risk right. ourselves we are going to risk the community so we need to be mindful of that and the d stands for distancing the social distancing sh- still should be practiced still such a time that the pandemic stays with us if we do not do this we are going to overwhelm the healthcare system which is already overwhelmed right right That's something uh, that is a sincere advice right dr anita matthew uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me and sharing your insights this is very helpful and i hope people uh, watch and of course uh, implement uh, your advice and take it seriously thank you so much for joining me thank you so much thank you